Hey, what's happening, my friends? Jason Woodland back again with Always the Journey TV, episode number 31. Let's see. It's always mixed up on the video. But anyway, episode 31, thank you so much for dedicating your time to learning about people in the community and what they do for their business, their jobs, their artwork, their side hustles, and everything in between. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure being able to dedicate time myself to be able to uh, interview some of these really cool people out here in the Utah community and uh, find out a little bit more on a granular basis what it is they're doing. Um, today's small business shout out goes out to Chunga's Mexican Restaurant located at 180 South, 900 West, Salt Lake City. And as usual, these business shout outs are not paid for. Um, they are just strictly tr trying to get uh, the name out into the community for other places that you may not have heard of. And you can go and check out and get some takeout and uh, support uh, small business. So today I'm really excited about uh, interviewing a, a great friend, Peter Mikowski. We've known each other for quite a few years, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about what he does for his work. So he is currently the Acting Director of Business Development Division for Salt Lake City's Department of Economic Development. Now, I want you to say that five times in a row really quickly. Um, so while working in the outdoor recreation industry for seven years, he attended the University of Utah, where he earned a bachelor's degree in city and metropolitan planning. Upon graduation, uh, he spent four years as a project manager in the Business Development Division of Ogden City, specializing in marketing, real estate, business recruitment and retention and expansion efforts, community development finance, and small business assistance. Uh, he oversaw Ogden's small business loan program, the city's business information center, and served as executive director of Wasatch Community Funding, CDFI. After five years in his current role for Salt Lake City, Peter's work has resulted in over 10,000 jobs attracted, 5 million uh, square feet of new commercial and industrial construction, and over 1 billion in new capital investment. Um, so Peter is a rockin', rockin' and rollin' guy, to say the least. I love seeing what he's doing out there. You can see his interviews on TV. Um, Peter is a Salt Lake City native and uh, outdoors enthusiast and moonlights as a musician. So that sort of leads into my rock and rollin' kind of guy. Anyway, he's an absolutely amazing musician, and, and when things get back to normal, you'll be able to see him play live as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce my friend, Peter. What's up, my man? Hey, Jason. How's it going, man? It's going unbelievable. It's just a beautiful day in Salt Lake City. Absolutely. Nice and uh, snowy outside. It is. It I'm is. Digging it. Lot, yeah, we're getting a bit of snow here in holiday, but it's not sticking yet, so that's good. Good. Good to hear. Yeah. So uh, tell me, I, I want to know what was your sort of original inspiration in getting into the lines of work that you're currently in? You know, uh, it's funny. So I, I spent uh, most of my uh, early 20s post high school uh, years playing music um, mm -hmm. in, a, uh, in various bands, actually. Um, always wanted to go, you know, get a degree. I think it was always a, a, what I planned on doing, but never really know, never really knew what I wanted to do. I had, I had no, no clue what I wanted to get a degree in. So, um, actually I'd, I'd always had a love for politics. I think from, you know, just punk rock days, uh, <laughs> really, uh, uh, politics was something I was very passionate about. And, uh, also architecture was just something I was really into, uh, ever since I was a little kid and, um, city planning, uh, came across my radar. Uh, I, I literally just took a class to check it out and fell in love with it. Um, so uh, towards the tail end of my 20s, a little a little later, I cruised through, got uh, that degree and was uh, lucky enough to land an internship uh, up in Ogden City, uh, where I eventually ended up working uh, and sort of learning the trade uh, up there of uh, business and economic development. So uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, it, it, it it all just kind of worked out, uh, to be honest with you, because I, I really fell in love with the profession. And uh, uh, after uh, all that time in Ogden, you know, I, living in Salt Lake, I wanted to do this work in Salt Lake, and that pr uh, opportunity presented itself. And uh, ever since then, it's been uh, interesting, let's say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I been great. <laughs> I mean, because even, even outside of the COVID experience, I mean, Salt Lake City is one of the fastest growing cities in America. Um, so that's, that's extremely exciting and there's a lot of stuff and we're going to touch on that, but right before we do, 
Can you can you um, name the bands that you've been in, just so my audience can can say, hey, I've seen him play before. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, Former Rocket uh, was my was my first band, actually. Um, uh, let's see. There was Accidente, uh, Laverkin, uh, Kick the Dog, Short Lived, uh, Sweet Jesus. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, and my current band, Swarmer. Nice. So you haven't played since probably the beginning of the year or late last year, right? Uh, actually, we've been we've been practicing a bunch. Uh, it's it's been actually really great uh, uh, through uh, through the through the pandemic. Uh, we've been able to spend uh, some time and uh, write some music. Uh, we actually did play a show uh, at the Urban Lounge uh, in November, yeah. which was right. an interesting experiment, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but uh, yeah, we're uh, we're continuing to write, and yeah, really looking forward to playing live in a more normal setting again. Yeah, without a doubt, and that's going to be exciting to see too. Um, so, tell me a little bit more specifically what what is what is your job entail? What does that look like on a day to day basis? So, uh, as you mentioned, I'm the acting director of the business development division for the Department of Economic Development for Salt Lake City. Yes, it's a mouthful. Uh, gov- per, yeah, just government through and through. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, our, our division, we are tasked with uh, working with businesses within Salt Lake City. So our, our mantra is businesses are our clients, uh, small or large. Uh, we, we act as uh, the single point of contact pretty much uh, through the city um, if, uh, if you anything business related. Uh, so, th- so that spans a very large gamut. Um, you know, we've got a very diverse economy here in the city, so we work with all different types of businesses. Um, we specialize uh, in a few uh, areas. Uh, one is uh, small business development and uh, entrepreneurism. Uh, so we uh, we have managers and, and coordinators dedicated towards those efforts, working with small businesses and uh, working with uh, small scale uh, startups and entrepreneurs. Um, we also focus on corporate recruitment, so uh, partnering with the state uh, and local partners uh, to help uh, recruit and attract uh, companies uh, to Salt Lake City, um, uh, while also retaining uh, those uh, those larger corporate partners as well. So uh, we, we put significant uh, resources and effort into that as well. Uh, workforce development uh, is a, a big component of the work that we do. Uh, it it, it kind of envelops all of that small business work and the corporate work, um, connecting people with jobs and making sure that companies that are coming here are able to find uh, a good talented workforce. Mm -hmm. Um, And then marketing. Uh, We, 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 we do a lot of marketing in and around the community, promoting, um, you know, businesses and and things happening throughout the community and our efforts uh, and the things that we do. Um, but, uh, yeah, ultimately we're here to, you know, help support businesses in the city and help grow our tax base. That's, uh, that's essentially our job and, um, it's a fun one. Yeah, that sounds really amazing. So, so when it comes to recruitment, uh, for businesses outside of the state, what is it that you're looking for more specifically? Uh, so we do have a few focused efforts. Uh, Mayor Mendenhall, when she took office in January, uh, uh, announced, uh, uh, Tech Lake City, uh, which she is coining it, uh, and right. Salt Lake City's effort to attract uh, uh, technology-based uh, companies uh, to the city. Uh, we focus that even further uh, in focusing on life science and healthcare innovation companies. Mm. So uh, we we have uh, significant assets here in Salt Lake City for this effort. Uh, we were actually approached by the business community to uh, to to promote this and lead this and really building Salt Lake City as the new life science healthcare innovation hub um, of the West, uh, at least. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it, it's, uh, it's an effort that uh, our mayor has, um, has, has really pushed forward. Uh, all, uh, we have, you know, a multitude of companies uh, throughout uh, the state, really, that are, that, that are getting involved uh, and really promoting that industry uh, here in Salt Lake City and helping grow it. Nice. So, so why that industry specifically at this point? So, uh, I think from an asset standpoint, we're, we have a we're, we have a nice strong base uh, with the University of Utah, mm-hmm. uh, the healthcare industry, uh, Intermountain Healthcare 
the University of Utah as well, uh, uh, heavily involved there. And then we have a great cluster of companies, um, to name a few, uh, Stryker, uh, Recursion Pharma that just moved into the gateway, uh, Biomerics, uh, there, there's uh, ARUP, there's so many that we could just rail them off, but we really do have a good base uh, to work with uh, in terms of really great companies. Uh, and then uh, from a supply chain standpoint, we're re really well positioned up and uh, up and along the Wasatch Front uh, with uh, um, sterilization and other uh, 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 other uh, pieces and components that are required uh, to build the industry here. So uh, we're starting um, uh, more on the marketing side and, and, and really bringing the community together and bringing these companies together to help push forth this effort. And uh, you'll see a lot coming out of uh, our department uh, in the, the coming months and, and years, really, uh, on this effort and promoting that industry. That's extremely exciting. So are you guys uh, mainly focused on the more of the startup space regarding that industry, or are you looking at both a mixture of uh, startup as well as recruitment from other cities? So I think we're looking to create uh, an ecosystem. Uh, it, more than anything. So that's working from late stage, mature companies all the way to startups. And uh, I think having uh, great partners at the University of Utah uh, to really help us on that startup uh, side uh, and, and and attracting, uh, you know, young entrepreneurs uh, to not only start their companies in Salt Lake City, but grow their companies here. Um, but then also supporting the big, you know, the big power, the big powerhouses, the horses that are really carrying this thing uh, is is equally important in making sure that they, you know, can find the the talented workforce that they need uh, in, in order to operate. Um, and then, you know, helping those early stage companies grow into those large companies. I think we will like, you know, we will likely see this natural corridor being created from the University of Utah to out near Salt Lake City International Airport, where a lot of our larger companies are located. So um, you can kind of see how that moves and through. And what, we'd, what we're hoping to see uh, through this effort, uh, it, it's called Biohive, if, uh, if I haven't mentioned that already, uh, oh, cool. is the, the coin term for the, <laughs> for like the effort. That. Yeah, we're, it, <laughs> it fits. Um, we're trying to get those early to mid-stage companies populated in downtown. And really growing, uh, you know, the life science, health, healthcare innovation sector in downtown. So it's not just the University of Utah, and it's not just on the west side. Okay, cool. Um, I see that uh, someone is handing you a drink. Almost. That was actually. Oh, uh, she should hand me a drink. Can you hand me a drink? <laughs> oh, you want a beer? Oh, we can edit that out, right? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So no, I you don't. Know, the, I'm the thing that I've always been, uh, you know. Uh, I, that I've loved. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I love Salt Lake City, but one of the big reasons is because uh, Salt Lake City and Utah in general has done a very good job historically, in my opinion, in being able to have a diversification of industries and business types. So we're not too overly dependent on one industry, um, sort of like our friends in Las Vegas. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love the city, but of course they, they have a pretty heavy uh, uh, hand obviously in the entertainment space so if something goes wrong like we're seeing this year it can be very disruptive across the board whereas salt lake you know we we've sort of been looked at historically as a little bit of an economic bubble not bubble as in growing up and popping but a bubble as in we've sort of insulated ourselves can you talk a little bit to that point and what your opinion is regarding that yeah, um, I agree. I think we've been very resilient. Um, if you look at the last economic downturn, we you know did substantially better than the rest of the country, uh, and really came you know out of it uh, much you know much smoother than uh, than a lot of other cities and states. Um, I think just by our nature, I think you can look at our geography. I mean, we are isolated. Um, you know, it's always been that way. If you've grown up in here in Salt Lake, you know, we've always been sort of that pass through, you know, sort of city on your way to Vegas or Los Angeles or Denver, uh, you know, wherever you're heading. And, um, I think that that has sort of, it has insulated us and kept us insulated, um, uh, you know, really from a geolog geographical standpoint, I think more than anything, first off. But um, and I think with the unique culture here, that also creates some of the more of that insulation here. Um, you know, you get a lot of people that, you know, have grown up here, lived here, start families here, so and, and, and have stuck around. So um, uh, what's interesting is that that has brought resiliency. 
Um, but now it's also attracted um, uh, folks and companies and investment from outside of the state. So that's being recognized, one, that we're stable and resilient, um, uh, which, you know, for any company, you know, assessing risk, that's uh, works out pretty well for us on our end. Um, but, uh, but also, you know, from a, with that insulation, it's kept prices down. So from a cost standpoint, we're extremely competitive. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we've all been talking about companies and folks from California, you know, moving to Utah, I think on average, you know, a hundred people from California moving to Utah every day, every day uh, on average. Wow. It's nuts. Um, we're seeing a massive influx and, and I can tell you from our standpoint, um, uh, company wise. Yeah. We've seen, uh, our pipeline pretty full with companies from California looking to relocate, uh, looking to relocate and Salt Lake city is definitely on the map. So, mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, uh, our state's always been very fiscally responsible. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a very obedient population <laughs> and, uh, I think that's really helped us weather these types of things. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, lastly, our, our, our economy is so diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, we have all different types of companies uh, uh, in, in this state doing all sorts of amazing things. And it's really been spread out across the board uh, to where uh, you even look at our unemployment numbers through the pandemic. You know, we've consistently been at much, uh, had a much better rate of uh, unemployment than the rest of the country. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think our uh, the diverse nature of our economy has also really helped us weather things like this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, something that I that I think is extremely exciting as well is our uh, new airport that's being uh, sort of rebuilt as we're currently speaking. They've got the first phase of it complete, and I think they've got one or two other phases, from what I understand. Uh, I'd like to hear your take um, on what what does having virtually one of the most technical technologically advanced and green airports to my knowledge it's going to be the newest airport in, in uh, the united states or at least in the top one percent of the newest what do you think that means for us as an economy going forward uh i think it, i think one it's a sign of a growing economy i think um you know uh, for those familiar with salt lake international airport um uh it it was in bad need of an upgrade anyway <laughs> uh it was one of the older airports um uh but uh yeah no they did a beautiful job and 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 it's something we should all be really proud of but i think it really just speaks more to our position as uh you know uh the center of the crossroads of the west um and you know I think from a transportation standpoint where Salt Lake City in particular is positioned, um, it, it's just ripe for growth. And I think that uh, in relation to the airport and the type of development that you're seeing out near uh, Salt Lake International, I mean, it's largely industrial. And I'm sure many of your listeners have been uh, privy to the talks and discussions in and around the inland port, uh, which they're uh, proposing to 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 to, to build there, uh, and service that area. So, um, you've got, you know, the intersection of I-80 and I-15, um, heavy rail, uh, uh, commuter transit, Salt Lake International Airport. I mean, from a transportation standpoint, it's a gold mine. So, um, I think that you're seeing the state really key in on business and, uh, the inland port concept and promoting business growth in that area. Um, so, uh, not only, you know, you know um, from a, a leisure standpoint, the, you know, the airport is, is great and, you know, we're going to have much, you know, cheaper, faster connections, um, you know, with this expansion. Um, but I think from a business standpoint and an economic standpoint, um, you're going to see tremendous growth in that area continue. Uh, and the Salt Lake International Airport is a big part of that. Yeah, that's what I figured. So, of course, we've got um, sort of these uh, hubs. We've got Silicon Slopes that sort of represents right at the point of the mountain and south of there. We've got Salt Lake City. And then there was a big startup community that was really uh, blossoming out there in uh, Ogden. Where do you see some of these bigger companies um, really putting their eyeballs uh, on on various aspects of the, of the Utah uh, landscape, so to speak? I think it depends on the company. Um, I, you know, for those, I, I think, yes, in Silicon Slopes, we've seen, um, you know, a huge explosion in tech. 
um, a lot of it homegrown um, out of BYU and, and entrepreneurs down in, in Utah County, which is, you know, just amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you drive that corridor, you've seen the construction, you know, with the with uh, uh, I-15 and then obviously all of the buildings that are going up. So um, you're definitely seeing a model of economic development happening um, uh, south of us. Uh, and for, you know, and they're attracting those types of companies that are looking for that, you know, that uh, Utah County feel, you know, they're, they, you know, they don't mind driving to work. They want the big single family home with the yard and the, you know, uh, and the room and, and, you know, it's, it, you know, driving to work isn't a big deal. And, and, um, they just, yeah, that's the, that's the, you know, the, their feel out there and the types of companies I think that they're attracting. Um, I, I think that if you're a company from, uh, you know, larger market, uh, say San Francisco, Chicago, New York, mm-hmm. um, and, and it, it depends, but a lot of those companies are looking for a more urban environment. So, um, you know, de- more of a downtown type of feel mm-hmm. where you can live and work, uh, not necessarily have to drive a car, uh, yeah. things like that, you know, great access to the outdoors, which are, which we all have. Um, but um, I think you're seeing, uh, those, I kind of, uh, I guess, compare it to San Jose versus San Francisco. Yeah. If you were thinking about, you know, I, I know we're nothing like Silicon Valley, but if you think of those two um, models, you know, downtown San Francisco is their urban model, you know, San Jose, more Silicon Valley is, you know, sort of that more suburban, you know, type of feel. Um, you're getting companies that want either or, or they want both. Um, so uh, I think you're seeing companies that are looking again for a more downtown urban feel, place where you can go, you know, get a drink after work, uh, walk to lunch, um, you know, uh, uh, live and work downtown. You're, you're seeing those companies uh, starting to hone in more on Salt Lake City. Um, I think uh, the challenge has been real estate mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, down in Utah County, you know, they're able to build, they've got lots of land. Uh, <laughs> and um and and companies that are interested we don't have that same land availability and uh office uh and office real estate here uh and uh, you're seeing it being built in front of us right now with major projects happening all over the city um and, and so it's starting to come but uh that's always been a struggle for us is really just the availability of real estate so um yeah. You know, I, I think it just depends on what they're looking for. I mean, to, to be quite honest, Salt Lake, if you're coming to Utah, Salt Lake's not the cheapest option um, if you're looking up and down the Wasatch Front. But, I mean, typically aerospace, you're going to see them go to Ogden. Uh, Salt Lake, you know, we're keying in on life science, uh, healthcare innovation, and, and we've already got a really good base. We've been doing that. Tech, yeah, uh, Utah County's been, you know, uh, owning tech uh, and will continue to do so. I think you're going to see that creep up uh, as we see once the prison is relocated and Draper uh, starts with their new concept. You're going to see, I think, a big push for technology there as well. Um, but it's it's really just going to benefit the entire Wasatch Front, to be honest with you. It's all interconnected. It's unique, again, to our geography, how we have this just massive urban area that's completely connected. Uh, so we're going to see just the entire Wasatch Front benefit from all the growth. Nice. That's extremely exciting. And, um, and and as you already know, of course, you know, and uh, spending a bit of time on uh, Twitter and, and watching all of the uh, the tech space um, on Twitter and you're and you're seeing the sentiment about uh, people leaving uh, uh, metropolitan areas like uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York City, uh, Chicago, uh, mainly because of uh, the the COVID situation. But there's a lot of other things, and we won't really get into those reasons on this on this interview. But there's a lot of reasons why people are leaving some of those places, and and some of the places we're starting to see, um, I think, benefit are places like Miami, um, Austin, Texas, and then uh, I've I've seen Salt Lake City and Park City come up a lot in those tech conversations on Twitter about where people are thinking about relocating or or creating an office just to test out the, the sort of ecosystem here because they know that not only do we have, I mean, we've got really amazing geography. I mean, we've, we've got all four seasons. We've got the mountains. We've got the city. We've got the suburbs. We've got the desert. I always tell people too, hey, I only live an hour and 45 minutes away from the beach. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, jump on a plane and you're in LAX in an hour and a half, approximately. Um, and then uh, you you get an, in, into an Uber and you're on the beach. 
So, I mean, technically, we're not too far away. Um, so, so I wanted to sort of talk to you a, a little bit further about that. I know you said there's a lot of people coming in from California. What other, what other either cities or states are we seeing an influx of people coming from? Uh, mainly California, but really all markets, uh, to be honest with you. I think one of the major attractors for Salt Lake City was Goldman Sachs. Uh, when they grew their office in downtown Salt Lake, uh, obviously they were drawing talent from all of their major market locations. And I think we were for a time there, if not still, uh, the number one requested re uh, location for relocation, um, uh, out of their, uh, out of all of their offices, including, you know, New York and London all over the world. So, um, uh, I think that's been, uh, it's been good for us. Um, and, uh, at the same time, it's also been a struggle. Uh, I think that uh, Utah, Salt Lake is, is a very unique place culturally. And um, when we're talking about, you know, uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, we tend to struggle. Um, uh, we're just, you know, we're a smaller city, very homogenous state. Um, uh, but um, I think that, you know, you're seeing uh, efforts like those of, of Goldman Sachs uh, and, and, co and companies like that of that size uh, in, in the city that are really driving the conversation. Nice. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because we also have a, a pretty uh, uh, educated uh, workforce here as well. You know, it's pretty normal to find bachelor's degrees uh, within the community um, and, and uh, at least some level of college. And there's also, uh, from from what I've uh, seen and, and uh, studied a bit, is there's a pretty large constituency of people that are bilingual or even trilingual, depending on the situation. And I think that also goes to part of that uh, culture where you've got a lot of uh, these young people who might leave on missions. And they come back, and a lot of them are bilingual now, or, or they're speaking possibly even three different languages. So, you know, companies can come here and see an educated workforce uh, cool geography. And then if they need, uh, you know, multiple languages, I think that at least that part is, is, uh, you know, more, more diverse than uh, maybe other aspects. Would you, would you agree? Absolutely. I, I think that's a major advantage and something that we've definitely touted uh, when talking with companies. And it's definitely got us uh, an advantage, um, you know, in, in attracting folks. Uh, I think that multilingual component is huge. Um, and I, I, I would say that uh, it, while it makes us competitive and we do have a very well-educated workforce, um, that's, uh, I think retaining that workforce uh, is uh, a number, is, you know, very upfront on the mind uh, of those companies that are either here or that are moving here. And in order to retain a workforce, you know, you need to provide an environment in which they feel comfortable and that they enjoy. Yeah. And so we've seen, and, uh, and I'll come back to it. Um, we've seen a major push, you know, you, uh, even from, you know, some of our larger corporate cl uh, clients um, uh, putting diversity and inclusion at the forefront of, uh, of their decision-making process. Uh, we have not scored well. <laughs> uh, let's just put it that way. Uh, and, and when it gets competitive um, and, and really it's, you know, uh, again, when these these companies are bringing employees from major markets um, and have you know having them work here, they want their employees to feel comfortable. Yeah, and they want them to stay. Uh, yeah. in, in order to do. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Lily. <laughs> You're on video. <clears throat> Love it. I can pick that up. <laughs> I'll pick that right up. Um, yeah, so uh, so Salt Lake City uh, is not as competitive uh, on the diversity uh, uh, front uh, as we would like to be. I think Salt Lake City is a very diverse place, uh, and, and it is a diverse city uh, more so than any other city in the state. Uh, but but we tend to struggle there. So when we talk about workforce, uh, and it's not only just having that educated, uh, multilingual um, uh, workforce here, uh, it's retaining it. Uh, and also retaining those folks that are coming from outside of Utah and, you know, providing them a place where they feel comfortable and a place that they feel like home. 
Yeah, that's a very good point. So we, we've definitely got some things to work on. Uh, I completely agree with that. And I think that there's some really great initiatives, uh, especially from uh, uh, our friend James over at the uh, Black Chamber of Commerce. I mean, he's got a lot of really cool things going. And there's a lot of really great people that are working and, and uh, you know, working toward this and, and having that conversation. And I think it's just a conversation that we just need to continually work on and, and uh, cultivate. Um, Absolutely. And I can tell you from, you know, from our standpoint, our experience, you know, the, the, the subject of diversity and inclusion is now, you know, I think at the forefront of a lot of our minds. And I can tell you from Salt Lake City standpoint, it, it very much is so. Uh, right. And we've been working diligently to make sure to uh, make that a pillar of the work that we do. So uh, it's it's an on it's ongoing. It's something that never stops. Um, but I, I rest assured that it's definitely on the front of mind uh, in Good. Salt Lake City. Good, that's awesome. Uh, so something else that I wanted to talk about is uh, the concept of office space. Um, can you just share maybe your personal opinion or what you might think in terms of uh, the infrastructure uh, going forward and what that might look like? Because of course. With COVID, we've all gone to these sort of distributed models where everybody's at home or, you know, whatever that looks like. Do you think that we're going to see a, a, a need for office space on the same level we did pre-COVID? And of course, it might take some time. Or do you think it's going to stay somewhat distributed with uh, somewhat of a need for office space? What are your thoughts there? So yeah, now right now everyone's remote, uh, and uh, we'll continue to be, you know, for the um, for the foreseeable future that coming into this next year. Um, I can tell you that um, from a recruitment standpoint, uh, you know, we have companies that are looking at locating in Salt Lake City and headquartering in Salt Lake City. Um, what happened in uh, uh, before COVID? most typically was you'd have companies take up space in co-working. Uh, so, uh, you know, taking, taking an office uh, in a co-working space uh, in and around downtown and start testing the, the, the labor market and see what type of talent they could attract. Uh, from that point, you know, building teams, kind of testing the waters, getting familiar, then they start their real estate search. And typically that would mean they'd either locate in, you know, in Salt Lake City or up and down the Wasatch Front, most uh, more typically in uh, in Lehigh, uh, uh, if for tech companies, for instance, yeah. um, we're seeing that same sort of concept where they're bringing in you know a small team to kind of test the waters from a late, from a workforce standpoint. But really, I mean, if if they're down here hiring, um, they're you know hiring remote employees uh, and with no real uh, idea or concept of uh, permanent real estate at the moment, only because we don't really know what it looks like. Um, I can tell you that work from home and remote isn't going anywhere uh, yeah. and will probably become a normal part of life, but we're social creatures and we need to be around each other. Uh, and I think especially for a lot of the collaborative work, like my team, uh, we really crave and thrive off of that um, atmosphere and being in the same office, bouncing ideas, being creative um, and, and, and just getting things done, you know, quicker and more efficiently. Uh, I don't think that's going anywhere either. So you're going to see hybrid models. Um, it may impact, you know, floor, uh, you know, floor plates. We may see companies taking less space uh, if they don't need it. Uh, again, this all depends on the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the vaccine and, and what, you know, the pandemic looks like, um, you know, uh, after you know, we go through that round, um, we'll see. Uh, but I think right now it's, it's, it's a little up in the air, but I can tell you that uh, remote is here to stay, but in-person work is not going anywhere either. Yeah, very good point there. Um, there I think there was a a Wall Street Journal article, and I don't, uh, I don't recall if it was an opinion piece or not, but it was sort of interesting how they were making the argument that, of course, we're going to go back to the the whole office model, not as robust as it was, but to a pretty large extent. And part of their argument was, from uh, from a dating perspective itself. And I thought that's actually an interesting point, although. Of course, you shouldn't be dating people in the workplace because that can that that has its own set of problems. But if you think about it, some people that is one of their only social outlets. 
So I yes. Yes, thought that was an interesting thing. Not that we need to have uh, further conversation on that piece, but look it up when you have a chance. And I didn't get a chance to go through the entire article, but a, a few parts of it, I thought, hmm, interesting. No, I think that I think that is interesting, and we can we can just tangent for a moment. I was was having this discussion with uh, a coworker of mine uh, who is you know trying to date through COVID, and uh, uh, apparently he he he's he discovered this phenomenon called a, a COVID girlfriend or a COVID boyfriend. Apparently it's, you know, someone you just shack up with, you know, during the pandemic, just cause you kind of like each other and you, and you can, <laughs> and you can tolerate each other, but it's not like a real thing. It's just like for the pandemic. And that's like understood. I thought that was very strange. <laughs> Interesting. Well, you not know, my, I, not my ideal, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I think that that actually serves a really good purpose, though, because, I mean, this uh, this experience can be a lonely experience if you're if you're not married or have uh, some kind of a significant other. So I think if you just had a a uh, a covid fling or someone at least maybe to watch Netflix Netflix with <laughs> you can just be roommates too, no big deal. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's cool. Um, so I mean, we've touched on a lot of really great things. Um, I, I want to hear just from your perspective, what is what are some of the best things people can do uh, to support local business? Obviously, spend money, right? But but from your your perspective, uh, what is what does that look like in a little bit more detail? Yeah, definitely spend money. Um, I would uh, what we've been recommending is uh, one. I think that our restaurant industry has been hit the hardest yeah. uh, by the pandemic, uh, and everybody knows that. Uh, I think. You know, continuing to order takeout um, uh, is is crucial <laughs> to yeah. the restaurant industry right now. So I know a lot of us are cooking from home and uh, you know uh, e eating uh, and making our own meals, but it really dedicate you know a couple nights a week to eating out um, and and, you know, and grabbing takeout. Uh, I'd recommend it, you know, you pick it up or if they have delivery service, use, you know, go direct just so, you know, the majority of money is going to the restaurant and their employees. Um, I know that there are uh, uh, some restaurants that have expanded their dining uh, to uh, to outside the outside of their restaurant. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've, we've seen parking lots and some people expanding onto the sidewalks and things like that. Dollars. Yeah, you've seen the igloos. Um, we've been pushing very hard to create conditions for businesses so they can do that. So I think over the wintertime, you're going to see a lot more outdoor dining options. I think we'll maybe see some creative things that uh, some restaurants will come up with. Uh, so as you, you know, see fit or feel safe enough, um, you know, uh, just uh, dining, at, you know, at restaurants, uh, um, you know, safely uh, uh, and doing whatever you can to support them. Uh, I, I, is, is my number one recommendation. I would say, you know, for Christmas this year, uh, you know, buy your family gift cards from local businesses. Yeah. You know, I like uh, that. I, I, that's what I'm doing this year. And, um, I think that that's a great way to support small business, but, um, really the restaurant industry is, it, it, it is hit really hard, uh, right now, uh, and retail. Um, so, you know, make sure when you're, you're at, you're shopping or, you know, looking for a bite to eat that you're really focusing on your favorite local restaurant that may not be around, uh, after this is all over. So make sure to support them and, and order as much food as you can. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that uh, a lot. I'd also, uh, uh, further that comment to say when you go to the your favorite restaurant, tag them on social media, give them a review, uh, tag you know other people within the comments and say hey come and check this place out. Uh, let's let's try to bring as much uh, free advertising to these places as we possibly can. Maybe even do a video and throw it out on Instagram stories or something about you know the place you're at and what you like about it. Absolutely, yeah. Anything you can do to support, yeah. Especially if yeah, if you if. If you're savvy with social media, make it happen. Nice. I love that. Okay. So let's say someone's watching this uh, interview and they say, gosh, you know what? I know the, the CEO of this company and they're located out in whereverville and uh, they might be uh, interested in coming into Salt Lake. Do they get a hold of you and your department? Is that is that what you guys do? You talk to them and then you wine them and dine them and take them to all of our amazing local restaurants or get takeout uh -huh. for them? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I don't know if we've done any, uh, uh, any, uh, 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 fam tours, uh, 
during COVID. We not that I've been on. Uh, so I wonder how they would work. Um, <laughs> I don't think they would work. But no, yeah, uh, we we are we are we again. Businesses are our clients. So if anyone, uh, if you own a small business, if you know someone with a business, you know that's uh, in need of some help right now. Uh, if you're a business and yeah, you're looking to uh, relocate to, to Utah or Salt Lake City, uh, our, our division is uh, is your single point of contact. So uh, definitely reach out to us. You can visit us on our website at www.slc.gov slash ed. It's an economic development. And uh, you can contact us there. We have a wealth of resources on our website right now, especially COVID-19 related That's right. stuff. That's it. Or uh, uh, slash ed. Let go. me fix that. Uh, okay, so slash ed, frontward slash, right? Yeah, forward slash. Okay, let's try this. Does that look good? That is it. SLC.gov, frontward slash ed. Uh, they, can, uh, they can get a hold of your department. Um, I'm sure they could probably submit forms. Uh, you said that, and also I wanted to give you a shout out, man. Like you and I were talking a bit during the, the beginning of this thing. Um, you know, I was talking to uh, a lot of the chambers and, of course, uh, being the president of the Holiday Chamber myself, uh, trying to talk to a lot of these small businesses and then put you in contact with businesses within the Salt Lake Valley. I mean, we were doing phone calls like 945 at night. I mean, shout out to you, man. Like you are a freaking straight. You, you, you're a man of your word. Like you're not just like, you, you know, clicking in and clicking out and hey, my 40 hours is done. Like. I mean, you were representing, you were out there in the community, you were doing everything you could and shout out to you, man. I appreciate your 80 hour work weeks you were putting in around that time. Uh, no, I appreciate that very much. And there's been, yeah, a, a lot of folks uh, 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 having to work like this uh, during the pandemic. I think, yeah, especially early on. Yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. It feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> it seriously uh, feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think uh, from our standpoint, uh, we're still not out of the woods yet. You know, we like to say there's light at the end of the tunnel, but we got a long way to go. And uh, we're going to continue working um, to uh, support, you know, business in the city. Uh, you know, we're, we just launched, uh, yeah, our, as I mentioned, our outdoor dining program. We're going to have a lot more uh, in and around that to help support uh, local restaurants and help keep them alive during uh, during the pandemic. And hopefully, you know, it, it develops into something uh, cool for, you know, spring and summertime where we actually have restaurants and, uh, you know, spilling out into the sidewalks, into the streets and doing some neat things. So um, uh, there's, there's definitely some silver linings there uh, that we hope to see, but uh, now we're, we're, we're going to keep working hard. Uh, uh, I love this city. <laughs> very, very much, and uh, no place I'd rather work. Uh, and it, it's been really good to me. So it's the least I could do. Yeah, yeah. We've got something special here in Utah, and Salt Lake City in particular. Of course, you know I, I love Utah and its geography and its amazing landscapes and everything, and in its entirety. But Salt Lake City, I mean, we're we're an ecosystem that is ultra special. You know, we've we, we've got each other's backs like we're there's a big support network within the music scenes, within the restaurant scenes and the small business scenes. I mean, you see it time and time again, and it's something that I truly love and cherish. And it's something that we need to do our best to continue to cultivate and to help, um, you know, help wherever we can. You know, when we see a little bit of a shining light through the fog, we need to we need to get to that light and do what we can to help you know, throw a lifesaver or uh, you know, give them shout outs, buy their product, you know, do, do all the stuff we can do. Everything. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I totally agree. It's a very special place. we got some special people here uh, are working really hard. And uh, I think we're going to come out of this uh, uh, hopefully, you know, in, in a good spot. Uh, we're going to, we've already lost some, you know, some of our favorite restaurants, uh, you know, we're going to do our best to try to keep everyone going and alive as best we can. Um, and hopefully, you know, yeah, uh, save as many uh, of, of these businesses as we, as we can as we move through this. So, yeah, get out there, shop local, buy local, stay safe, distanced, masked, all that stuff. Yep. All the stuff. So oh, I think stuff. it's uh, um, pretty safe to say that uh, that some of the biggest initiatives coming from you and your department are, of course, uh, the continuance of of small business uh, all around Salt Lake City, uh, throwing lifelines, uh, you know, helping them figure out if there's some kind of funding or some kind of, you know, uh, community connection or 
COVID related uh, aspects to help them stay safe so they can stay open. Um, and then also uh, building out that ecosystem of the biotech industry. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, I mean, those are those are really our two big initiatives at the moment. Um, and, uh, you know, that will grow and change over time, yeah. uh, obviously. Um, but uh, I think that those are those are going to be two major themes coming into this next year. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be seeing lots more on that. OK, that's awesome. So uh, going to a wrap up, um, I, I always like to ask, uh, what is one of your favorite songs or favorite quotes, or both? Okay. Uh, favorite song, I'm going to do both. Favorite song is When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin. Yes, great. Uh, my favorite quote uh, would have to be, I'd rather be hated for who I am than loved for who I'm not uh, by Kurt Cobain. Nice. I love those both. Those are Those are wonderful. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely Led Zeppelin. In fact, uh, the, the last interview I did with uh, Kylie Howell, uh, her, her favorite song, I think she stated, was a uh, Led Zeppelin song as well. It's, it's, a, it's a no-brainer. I mean, <laughs> it's Led Zeppelin. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I remember my mom, uh, she, she taught me all about Led Zeppelin when I was a little kid, and that was just uh, you know tons of phenomenal memories and, and uh, great things connect to Led Zeppelin for sure. Yep. I think everybody has a stairway memory of some sort. So without a doubt, <laughs> man, this has been a sincere pleasure having you on the show and sharing with us your thoughts uh, about everything that uh, we've, we've had going on over the last little while and what you've been working on. Again, shout out to you and your entire department. Uh, you guys are kicking a and taking names and, and, uh, and, and sometimes people don't know who's uh, behind the veil, you know, pulling a lot of strings and making stuff happen. And, and uh, here's the unveiling of my man, Peter. So uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for all of your hard work. And uh, yeah, like I said, thanks for uh, dedicating your time today. No, Jason, thanks for your time. And thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to taking you to Chungas. Awesome. I look forward to that as well, man. That's going to be ultra exciting. Cool. Well, I'm going to have you hang out in the green room for just a quick second while I wrap up. Is that cool with you? Sounds good, man. All right, my man. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, so there you have it, my friends, uh, Peter Mikowski. Uh, he is the Acting Director of Business Development Division of Salt Lake City's Department of Economic Development. Like I said, say that five times. This guy's a freaking champion. I love him. I love everything he's doing. Uh, keep an eye out for uh, what they've got going on there in Salt Lake City. And again, thank you so much for uh, checking out Always the Journey TV. Don't for forget to subscribe and throw us a thumbs up and like the content. If you have any questions, definitely throw that in the comments. I'll answer to the best of my ability, but if I don't have the answer, I am almost positive my man Peter does. So thank you again so much and have a wonderful rest of your week.